Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our instant match reaction after Denmark 5, Ireland 1 at the Aviva Stadium. It all went um, peak time. How do you think it went? Um, I'll try not to curse as much as possible, but that was that's the worst performance I've ever seen from an Irish team. That includes the 6-1 against Germany, that includes the loss in Cyprus. Like that is the worst I think I've ever seen us play as a team at any point in my life anyway that was just it was listless it was defensively and it's what we've prided ourselves on for years being solid defensively we were absolutely horrendous there was mistakes from all the defenders the two fullbacks were awful the first half it's probably not all their fault because they weren't given the protection they should have they been given but in the, in the second back. half David Stephen Ward was at fault for what two maybe three of their goals and Christie was probably at fault for the other two yeah um, the way they set up basically they, they were targeting Christie from the first whistle and he started nervous he did one or two nice things during the game nice little run ball in but for the, for the whole first half he was completely isolated every time a fullback had the ball they'd run 15 yards before they seen an Irish player in support um, the subs killed us uh, Robbie Brady went centre midfield Denmark just kept the ball peppered it around and they tied with us in the second half obviously uh, midfield was in the second half and like the two substitutions we were in midfield were up in media and the kind of consensus was that it probably wasn't balanced enough and we had maybe gone a little bit too gung ho and probably lost our shape a little bit too early in the game what was the kind of you were in the crowd what was the kind of reaction when McGeady and Houlihan came on at half time um, a lot of people were, uh, were were down and out once the second goal went in. In my opinion, look, there was two mistakes made in the first half and we got punished. You can't afford to make that many mistakes against a player of Christian Eriksen's quality, let's be honest. like yeah. We see him in the Premier League week in, week out, and he's arguably up there with Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva and the likes of them as the top playmakers in the Premier League. And you're going to give that fella the amount of uh, space and time going to punish you and it just goes to show I thought Cyrus Christie could have done a lot better on the line for the first goal yeah. but that's another matter yeah, in terms of uh, when I think a lot of people were shocked when um, Wes Houlihan and uh, McGeady came on not so much Wes out more so McGeady I mean I don't I, I was expecting Shane Long look at the end of the day it's getting to a point now where we get, we, we just need to we need to move on from the, from the old Deadwood and we need to start bringing in new blood and the likes of Anna Stevens, Matt Doherty Liam Kelly these types of players they need to start getting a run we need to start getting we need to stop relying on this whole Wes Hulahan's our best player he's 35 years old mm. don't get me wrong I think Wes fabulous player but at the same time uh, we need to get over this whole Wes Hulahan's our best player I don't know where that idea is coming from Like he might be our most creative player but he's He's definitely not our, like our best player. The players there that on their day can be very good. Um, McLean, Brady, Hendrick. Yeah. He, I don't, even even the fact that Arthur went off tonight, I thought was a bit of a shock. I thought he was. I thought he was actually doing very well. I thought yeah. he was winning balls. Um, his distribution might not have been the best, but it was still better than most of the players that we had on. Um, I thought Stephen Moore came for a lot of criticism, but look. Like people are asking us to play expansive uh, type of football. People are complaining the fact that we went to got a nil all draw, and pe like people were complaining about the fact that we drew with uh, Denmark and Copenhagen and it was nil all and we didn't play the best brand of football. But we kept a clean sheet. And it just goes to show tonight how how actually unbelievable we were defensively the other night seemed, to go and get to go and get they them. were overawed by the pressure. The pressure got to them. And no, I, I genuinely just think that Christian Eriksen should just be nicknamed the Punisher because any chance he got, he just punished us. Well, like they made as well, they brought in you know two changes to their team from the last game. They brought in Christensen, brought in Christensen who actually played at right back, and then uh, Yusuf Pilsen who came and played in the right wing. Pilsen gave Ward a torrid time down the right, and Christensen, he just oozed class throughout the game. Like he, you can put him at right back, centre back, centre midfield, it wouldn't matter. He would have dominated that game. And the second half, the substitutions at half time. Yes, I agree that Hill Lahan should get on 
and you know we needed to, we needed goals we needed creative players but Giddy, I don't disagree with bringing on I actually don't disagree with the two substitutions disagree with the players he brought off because he decided that Robbie Brady and Jeff Hendrick were going to be good enough to contain Delaney to contain Ericsson to contain Sisto coming in from the left who causes trouble all night when he should have maintained the balance bring off I would have I said it to Phil at half time I'd bring off Ward and put Brady at left back and leave one of the lads in midfield whether it be Arthur whether it be Myler leave one of them in there and then have Hulahan and McGeady either so, or Hulahan, McGeady and McLean behind Murphy that's fine and then bring Long on they be brought on Long too late but the game was gone already anyway but I'm marking it down towards the end of the game just for something to do to take my mind off it and I pick nine players out of the current squad who I think it's probably the end of the road for them and Do you, could you list them off the top of your head? A few of them anyway, McGeady, Houlihan, um, McShane and Colin Doyle obviously who weren't involved, um, Stephen Ward, John O'Shea. Um, Stephen Ward? Yeah. I think I still think he's a bit to offer. I think tonight he was exposed against good players. Yeah. And now I'm not saying oh Steve. Didn't think, yeah, but you were saying he didn't get protection, so I, yeah. But still, if he's in a one-on-one, so Christiansen wasn't was bombing forward, so he was he was misclearing and miscontrolled. Look at it. Looking for the Ericsson goal. The Ericsson goal tells you all you need to know about is the third one. You know, he just he passes the ball to Ericsson at the back. His head was gone, and he just it's just stupid mistakes that top players don't make, and better players don't make those mistakes, and we can't at this stage if he's not outstandingly better than the alternatives in a Stevens or Cunningham whoever you bring in at left back even Brady at left back if he's not mar- or miles better than them he doesn't play because he's older I would rather have a lad of Ward's quality who was going to be there for five years than have Ward at this stage he's too old and that's what we need to that's what management and fans need to get through their head at this point yes these players might be as good as the lads who are going to come in but I'd rather have a 24 or 25 year old who can improve than a 32 year old who this is his best and he's only going to go backwards it's time for this team and this squad to get younger yeah. and it, the time is now we can't go another campaign with this group of players if you got anything to add there but I was just going to talk about Martin O'Neill but if you got anything to add no I, I agree um, obviously Martin O'Neill was coy about whether or not the, the, the lads the were in the press conference for the game yeah. sorry I'm not yeah, we're, all dejected. we're all dejected yeah. Um, yeah but we were in and obviously the question was brought up and he, he was deflecting deflecting saying he hasn't spoken to John Delaney so we'll see what happens there uh, whether it's a case where he does he does bow out look I was new ideas yeah. new players exactly I think for us to now go forward as you say Phil with you know new ideas and everything like that we new need manager. to yeah need to be a new manager need to be a younger manager need to be a different Chris style. Hewitt even in Hewitt at this stage I'm not and a massive he, fan of Chris to, if, he, if he wants to leave like Brighton to come to Ireland then fair enough I don't think I don't, I don't, I don't see why, why he would turn down uh, the opportunity the most interesting thing I think I took from this if, if O'Neill goes uh, at the same time like I've Part of me, like, O'Neill got it wrong against Serbia and he went back and he, he, he changed the game plan and he, and he came back and he proved us wrong. So you got to give him credit as much as you want to give him, like, you can't always just go with the negative, like, when he did it right, he did do it right and that's fair. And he got a great result against Wales out there and stuff like that. And look, if you were to put fucking uh, Denmark without their two best players, and arguably we were without our two best players in Walters and Coleman. Yeah. So you put without Ericsson and say maybe um, Sisto or someone like that, um, or maybe Christensen, but you'd argue because he didn't play the first game. Um, Sisto, Christensen, Pilsen, Ericsson. Well, you take two of them out. But if you take if you take two of them out, there you you'd see them struggle too. Do you know yeah, what I mean? We went we went almost a full campaign without Coleman after yeah. the Wales game. So. You well, know, like tonight showed how much we miss him because just the link up play on the flanks was atrocious. Uh, it was just 10 seconds too slow than it needed to be. Uh, the ball was always late. Uh, uh, case in point, Robbie Bray tried to put Ward through. Ward was too slow to get to it. Mm. Uh, and Darren Murphy in the first yeah, half. Yeah, yeah. Milo's ball. Um, I think Milo would be another one I'd be putting on your list. Yeah, Milo is actually on my list as a Would player who's kind of. I'd love to. I look. I'd love to still have Myler around the. Look, Myler had two good games for Ireland, and everyone thought he was a godsend. But, but I think. I think. I think Myler's a very good player, but I don't think he's the answer. No, he's not the answer. And I still I think, think Hurin can come squad. in there and do a job. Yeah, Possibly. absolutely. Yeah, but they're the type players you need to look at. Yeah, exactly. So oh, yeah, Borahan, totally Alan Brown, even from Preston, who's been in the squad the last couple of times. This kid, he's playing. He's playing every week in the championship. 
So why not give him a go? Yeah. Why not give so these most, lads a go? Most of the players are. John O'Shea. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, to see how these contract exactly. talks pan and out. Look, O'Neill, for how you say, he's tactically changed it after the Serbia game and he got it right in a couple of games and all. His tactics tonight were just ridiculous. They were just stupid. Even David Moyla team. played right wing. David yep. Moyla played right wing in the first half. James McLean was playing centre forward. Yeah, for McLean and Murphy were playing up front. And McLean, David McLean, Moyla was playing right Murphy was playing right number wing. 10 role at one point. Like. Murphy was like a fall to the Yeah, there, Murphy so was so dropping sorry. deep. Yeah. Like, yeah, to let McLean play for. It was yeah, ridiculous. It doesn't make but any no, sense. If my, no, O'Neill does say, and I'm not, I'm not actually totally against that. If he can bring in the new blood, and we can go from there. Yeah. I, I, I'd give it a go. I honestly would. I don't, I don't think, I, and people might if it's disagree with me in the comments, yeah. and that's fair enough. But I think that you know, O'Neill, he put a lot of teams out there with without their without their best players. They're gonna struggle yeah. either way, and he to get us as as close as he did, like up until tonight. To uh, uh, to World Cup, he deserves he deserves a bit of credit. In fairness, we lost two captains. We wrote two captains tonight. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And they're leaders at the same time. Well, yeah. we'll go around quickly then as we finish. Um, when we talk when we talk about this in a few days' time, will Martin O'Neill still be the manager, Phil? I don't think so. I think he might he may resign just to be proud. Paul, oh. I think he'll stay in the job. I hope he goes. I get the feeling he goes, but I'm gonna go with he. I'm gonna go with he. Just becomes stubborn to it and he stays. Um, I also think it's the wrong decision if he does stay. I think Delaney is a get out of jail card now. Of the everyone thought of the contract signed. Well, O'Neill said in the press conference tonight. It's not. It's yeah. agreed, but it's not signed. Verbal agreement. Yeah, yeah, Delaney well, can just take. Delaney can take that off Delaney the table. Delaney, Houdini. I hope table. John Delaney takes off table because he'll endear himself I think, to a lot of Ireland fans at that point and go, right, well, he will make the difficult decisions then. He won't just sit okay, alone. Okay, okay, but if that happens, who are you taking in? It's hard to say straight well, away. Who would, you, who, would you, who would you have? Obviously, Hewton stands out to a lot of people. One I, said to, you, Phil, you one, one I said to Phil <laughs> on the way up, and people might laugh at him because of the jo- last job he did, Slavin Bilic. Yeah. Slavin Bilic did a brilliant job at Croatia. He knows how to manage an international football and he knows how to be successful in international football. I get that. I just would no. rather have someone who's, who's been involved with the Irish setup and kind of knows it. I but mean, I think someone coming in does. alien to it, it worked with Trapatoni after Staunton to bring someone in who was alien to it and he made it successful again. Brought a lot of different players into the squad than had been there. Obviously, they were more experienced, but Bilic is a different type of manager. He'll rest a lot more on younger players, what he did with Croatia. I think Bilic is not a bad show for it. I think there is other options, though, but Bilic just comes to mind off the top of my head. Okay, I would go with Hewton if O'Neill was to go. Big Anything. Sam, if we're going to do a long ball, do it right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, guys, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Who, if, if O'Neill goes, who would you like to have uh, in charge? Also, um, we're aiming for 1,000 squ- subscribers before Christmas. We're at 741 the last time I checked this evening. So if you could please uh, subscribe, that would be massive help towards uh, getting us up there. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Thank you.